United America, presented by Allstate. All right, clear, 39 degree. First Sunday of 2020 in South Philadelphia. Playoff football back in the city of brotherly love. The fans there are ready for it. After leading the Bengal Eagles to four straight wins and the NFC East crown, Carson Wentz makes his playoff debut. Up against Super Bowl champion Russell Wilson and the Seahawks, they're in Philly where they won on week 12. Seattle, Philadelphia, first time ever in the playoffs as wild card weekend, it's been wild, wraps up and we get to go in with football night in America. Whatever's happening in a couple of channels down the dial, if Minnesota wins, we'll see them in San Francisco next Saturday on NBC. The highest remaining seed from Wild Card Weekend goes to Lambeau a week and a few hours from now on Fox. And they build to see which NFC team will go to Miami for the Super Bowl. Welcome to the show, Mike Tirico, Mike Florio, who's very attentively watching this show, not the Vikings game. Like Rodney Harrison, Chris Sims, and of course, Hall of Famer, Tony Dutch. We love the playoffs. We love the field for it. The teams are warming up, so let's get right on the field in Philadelphia. You, presented by Allstate. This is feeling like a defensive game, so I want to start defense, and we'll start with the Seahawks. Well, I'm looking at Jadavian Clowney, and he really, he's the key to their defense. He brings the energy, he brings the motion. They're going to move him around and try to find out that mismatch because the Eagles have so many injuries on the offensive line, but this is a guy that sometimes doesn't show up on the big stage. I'm looking for him to have a big night if they want to have success tonight and win a game. I hear that, Rodney. I'm looking at Malcolm Jenkins. He's the quarterback of this Eagles defense. He's going to be important tonight, not only to protect these corners, stay deep, help out in the pass game against Russell Wilson, but you'll see him at the line of scrimmage a lot too, whether it's spying at Russell Wilson or helping in the run game. I think the team who runs the ball the best is going to win it. Seattle got big performances from Carson and Penny, but they're not here. Marshawn Lynch has had a full week of practice. He is the key, I think, for their offense tonight. The Eagles have had a bunch of uh, Vince Papalis lately on offense. <laughs> Zach Ertz, their key tight end, is back with a kidney and rib injury, cleared to play, and will play the day. He's one of the leaders on offense, leader on the defensive side of the ball. On the field, when he's out there for offense, he's a defense for Seattle. Now a five-time all Pro Bobby Wagner, fifth time he's voted an All Pro, confirmed this week. We'll watch how he patrols the middle and the inside of that defense for the Seahawks, who are playing this game where they've been good this year on the road. The reason they're on the road and not at home as the three seed within inches. Jacob Hollister couldn't get in, so Liam McHugh talked to Pete Carroll at the visitors' locker room. Pete, your team was inches away from hosting a playoff game. Now you start out on the road. How did you guys move on from last week's loss? Well, you know, we, we finished that game really well, except for two inches, you know. And uh, so we, we know that we put ourselves in a position to win it and all that. And so we tried to take that out of it and realize it was a great matchup and all. And, and uh, so it, it was no problem getting ready. You know, we got to go, you know. And, and so our guys know how to turn, turn the page, and we did that again, and we're primed and ready to go for a big ball game. Marshawn Lynch gets a full week of practice leading up to this one. How does that change how you're able to use him? Well, we know a lot more than we did last week at this time, you know, and, and the fact that he's played, he bounced back great, didn't affect him uh, playing in a game. So we've got him available to us in, in, on you know, regular proportions and all that, and we'll just see how that fits together. Six weeks ago, you were here in Philadelphia, beat the Eagles, forced four turnovers from Carson Wentz. What's the best way to attack a quarterback with his skill set? <laughs> Well, it's not a whole lot different than a lot of other guys. You got to rush faster. You know, if you can get that done, sometimes it comes from the coverage, and he has to hold the football. But uh, we certainly have to see if we can find a way to generate some some pressure and make it hard on the QB. It really doesn't matter who you're playing. That's kind of how you got to go go about it. Thanks so much. You got it. All right, Liam and Pete, thank you. Some key injury updates in this game. Quandry Diggs with the ankle will go. Dwayne Brown will not on that offensive line for Seattle. You see Miles Sanders in shot there. The rookie running back will go, but he will not have Lane Johnson leading the way. The terrific tackle is out with an ankle injury. So let's take you back to yesterday. The AFC side of wildcard weekend was just that wild. In overtime, Deshaun Watson was the defining player. So they both down down the perfect defense. They have two pretty blood serves, and Deshaun Watson just makes an unreal play to get the ball out. Leslie Frazier, defensive coordinator, and the players about Saran Neal, Matt Milano, going to see this in their sleep and their dreams for nightmares. Not a dream. It's set up. <laughs> Amy Fairbairn from 28 yards. The Texans down 16 nothing. Rally and keep the Bills winless in the postseason. Since 1995, Josh Allen, some wild and crazy plays, but you feel this team is still on the rise. The other game, Derrick Henry was terrific. Yeah, the one guy that you have to stop is Derrick Henry. Everybody knows that. So much for the boogeyman and how great this Patriots defense is. For two weeks straight, they can't stop any offense. 
Titans will be moving on. 34 carries, 182 yards for big stories. Tom Brady at the end of it. Yeah, well, definitely desperate situation here. They're trying to run the hook and ladder. Brady gets pick six here, but hey, New England, they got to find more weapons around Brady. Brady's 42. He's not capable of carrying the team anymore like he once was. So I don't know. Will this be the last time we see him or not? I don't know. Yeah, good question. We won't see him the rest of the way. Tennessee, that Baltimore late game Saturday night on CBS. And Sunday, CBS will have the Texans hosting Kansas City. So the South sweeps the East out of the AFC postseason. Back to Brady. What's next, Mike?